This is the sound of a tuning fork movement. It's the caliber 214, humming in F sharp. And this is a bull of a space view that houses the movement. The sweep second moves evenly. Here it is, speed it up. Okay, so let's get a closer look. Copper coils inside a cup sit atop the tuning fork tines. Transistor and coil assembly. Resistor and capacitor. And behind the green plate and the connector strips, the battery cell is housed. The crown is recessed at the back of the watch. And the space view instruction manual is no page turner, but the setting instructions are clear and with good diagrams. The dial looks like it was designed by robot overlords, but the movement is truly a marvel. There was never anything like it before, and there has been nothing quite like it since. In 300 years of watchmaking history, here was a watch measuring time without the use of a balance wheel. Tuning fork and transistor telling time together. Okay, so how did this 214 movement come about? We have this man to thank. His name is Max Hetzel. With a master's in electronics, Max was hired as a development engineer at Bulova in Biela, Switzerland. Ard Bulliver, the chairman of the Bulliver Watch Company, directed Max to research the new electric watches from Hamilton and Lip. Max concluded that electric watches with conventional balance wheels would offer no accuracy advantage over standard spring-driven balance wheels. However, he was intrigued, and he set about looking at ways to improve accuracy Unburdened by a traditional watchmaking background, Max thought the future lay in utilising newly developed transistors. Could he achieve greater accuracy with an oscillator controlled by a transistor that would deliver a higher frequency? Perhaps it was this connection to frequency that led Max to consider the tuning fork. Tuning forks are amazing things. See this scientist use a tuning fork to transmit sound through light. Now partially blocking the beam with a tuning fork. You can hear it on the speakers. of accuracy ringing in his mind, he had an epiphany. Could he use the oscillations of the fork to drive the gear train of a watch? Take a tuning fork, add electricity, then add an index arm to drive a wheel. The humming forks had a frequency of 360 hertz. A tidy multiple of 60, 
that translates easily to the gear train works of a watch. Incredible accuracy was achieved. Here you can see the times in slow motion. And the index arm driving the index wheel. And here is a recording of Max explaining just what that index arm was made of. It was the only balance spring material which uh, Bulawan made itself, and that was nice fancy. Are you ready? Because I want you to pay attention. This is the beginning of something. Do you have time to improve your life? Do you have precisely 30 seconds for a word from Accutron watches? The watch appears, bottom third. The second hand moves with a fluid sweep, and above it, Accutron time. You go into a business meeting. Is there food in your teeth, ashes on your tie? And you've got nothing to say. The meeting is boring, but you can't be. But you're wearing an Accutron. This watch makes you interesting. It's a boardroom. It's black and white. We hear light traffic, no talking. We just see our man, you, late 20s, shaggy and with a youthful colic, but in a suit and tie. This is a businessman, staring at his watch as muffled conversation swirls around him. Now we just hear the electronic hum. Um. Strangely, Bulova never set out to sell the Space View. They originally wanted to sell the watches with conventional dials. Hoping to explain the movement technology, they delivered promotion watches without dials as exhibition models. But customers liked what they saw, and watchmakers started to sell them. Bulliver recognised a sales opportunity, and the Space View was born. In fact, men loved them. As did X-11 pilots, and NASA, and women. The Accutron movement was a tremendous success until the advent of quartz. As quartz watches got cheaper into the 70s, the fate of Accutron was sealed and the production of this humming movement would end. Now normally that's where I'd end this video, but there is a small epilogue. You see, quartz watches relied on a vibrating quartz crystal cut to the shape of a tuning fork. A development quartz copied from Accutron. Ironic that the defining feature of the Accutron movement would herald its demise. Kind of awkward. But never mind. Thousands of Accutrons are still worn today, gently humming away on the wrist and keeping time in tune. And on that note, I think I'll buzz off. Many thanks for watching. Um.